Welcome back to Afternoon Express. With a degree in fine art from UCT, it was while visiting London that Ashley McLean was shown how to cut a stencil by now famous graffiti artist, Banksy. Since then, she evolved from artist to curator of What If The World Gallery, becoming one of South Africa's most respected curators, representing local artists at art fairs around the globe. Welcome to The Loft. Thank you. I love your job, and I want to get into that in a little bit, but first I want to know, I mean, how did you get to meet Banksy? Nobody in the world even, well, I suppose only a few mm. select people know who he is and what he looks like. Um, I, <clears throat> I was actually, uh, I started doing a little bit of uh, graffiti yeah. here in Cape mm. Town and I met up with uh, some British writers while they were here who I was visiting and I was just lucky enough to visit him as, at his studio um, wow. in uh, Notting Hill it was at the time. And, oh, just off Portobello Road, actually. Yeah. And uh, he showed me what I'd been doing wrong up until that point. So, um, yeah, it was good to have a little bit of a lesson from him. Okay. So how did you get into the art world? Um, I, so following my kind of foray into um, quite sort of delinquent, well, not delinquent, but uh, street art, um, I, love street I wanted art. to uh, learn a little bit more about other forms of art making and I became quite interested in film. I made a number of independent films, um, yeah. set up a couple of collectives with uh, friends of mine. And then I went into formal tertiary education at uh, Michaelis at UCT. Yeah. Um, following that, uh, I realized with a number of my graduate friends mm -hmm. that there wasn't actually an infrastructure for artists just coming out of the academy in yeah. which to show. It was, it was sort of this um, net that a lot of people were dropping through and at the time I had two friends who started a very small gallery almost a broom cupboard mm. um, and they were doing performance and they needed somebody to come in and, and put on an exhibition so I just started like that inviting people I'd graduated with to to create my first show yeah. and um, we just took it from there. How does one become a curator and I think for our audience if you can just explain what exactly does a curator do? So a curator traditionally, <clears throat> um, I mean, they've been curators for hundreds of years, yeah. would have been a carer of a collection, not necessarily an art collection. It could have been any, any form of collection. Um, in a more contemporary sense, a curator is someone who organises exhibitions of either film, performance, installation, painting, sculpture, normally with a specific theme in mind, mm. um, and uses that theme to create a a dialogue between the works and objects that are on display and the viewer that comes to see them. So it's about sort of raising, using objects and display to raise questions and to mm. create conversations. I'm a really huge fan of art and all, all forms of art. But as a curator, how do you remain quite impartial? Because I think it's quite a personal thing to be mm. able to select pieces. It is. Um, at time, I actually think you can't remain impartial. You no, can't. I don't think so. <laughs> it's a, it's got to be a personal decision because yeah. it's your, it's not to sound overly controlling, but as a curator, you also bring to yeah. the table your own set of aesthetic concerns or conceptual concerns. So it has to be a personal exactly. decision. Um, that's where the curate, curatorship in, for example, museums and commercial galleries or someone who's potentially working as an art consultant would differ because yeah. it is very much you have to be passionate about the work Absolutely. that you show. Otherwise, uh, there's no integrity in what you're doing. There's always been amazing artists to come out of South mm. Africa if you look at mm. the likes of William Kentridge and that kind of mm. thing. But how mm. does a young emerging artist break it into the scene? Well, <clears throat> I think the first thing to do is to make yourself visible. Yeah. And I've always, um, I've always advocated for a DIY approach. So don't wait for somebody to come and, yeah. and say, I, I like would love agent. to invite you to an exhibition at my yeah. gallery. You have to start by doing independent projects. Um, I think a lot of younger artists are forming collectives. A lot of people are using, obviously, social media to... I mean, exactly. I think one of the artists I think is doing that really well at the moment um, is an artist called Lady, Lady Scully. Oh, know. we've had her on the show. How amazing is Lady Scully? <laughs> yeah, she's doing she's a fantastic phenomenal. job of... Um, because then when, as a younger artist, when you come to the gallery, mm. you, you already have a, a number of achievements behind you. You have a body of work. You've worked you through some of your issues. You don't necessarily need a name, but you yeah. need to show that you have the, the, the drive 
to be self-motivated and to pursue this career because exactly. it's a very, very hard road. I think now for a lot of students when they're studying art at university level, they, they, they've changed the name of the degree from fine arts to audiovisual, I think, so that there's so many other mm, things because you, mm. you can't just be a standard artist anymore. You've got to understand You've the You've got to be multidisciplinary, yeah. I think a lot of artists have, are, are very, becoming very savvy to the fact that, mm. um, you know, there needs to be, and I always really advocate this for the artists that we work with, there needs to be a symbiotic relationship between the gallery and the artist yeah. and that we're both working towards the same goal, which is to create the yeah. best work possible and get it to as many people as we can. Amazing. So, yeah. So I'm of the opinion, and I think maybe you can clear this for me, that gone are the days of people saying, oh, are you going to become an artist, but there's no money in it, there's no future in mm. it. Like, what advice would you have for aspiring young artists? I definitely wouldn't advocate anybody going into the arts with the goal of making money. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's not the career you choose if no. you want to, because it's such a, it's such a, it's a very complex. But that complex, should never lead yeah. anybody's career choice in any case. Mm. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, I think, I think there, yeah, and there are obviously different tiers of artists. I mean, yeah. you get very commercial artists that um, make a huge amount of money, yeah. but are not necessarily artists that will be remembered for breaking ground or raising yeah. issues or, contributing to the kind of historical archive of humanity. <laughs> um, but I would suggest for younger artists, if you are entering the, the art market, the first thing is to do is to, as I said, make yourself visible, be professional, start a website, um, mm. create a presence, take on your own projects, approach people, look at uh, grants and funding opportunities so that mm. you can realize these projects. Um, engage with the arts community around you, go to openings, read about contemporary art, go to the museums, like really engage and immerse yourself yeah. in it um, because it is, it is a participatory space. Um, yeah. So I, I don't think, uh, I think people need to get, you need to get out there. Exactly. And then once you have that and you can, and hopefully you can secure representation um, from a gallery, then it's a, a, a long building process, I would say probably about maybe five, five to six years before wow. you achieve uh, Is stature. it rewarding, do you think? Would you recommend it? Yes, definitely. I mean, I think if art is not something that you, <laughs> you can uh, turn on or off. Yeah. It's something that you are driven to do yeah. uh, through curiosity or through a desire to challenge yourself or through yeah. a desire to challenge those around you. Um, so it's, it's something that you can only do if you have a deep and lasting love Passion, and yeah. commitment. I'm really <laughs> such a huge appreciator and, and fan of art that I can watch the old documentaries of old pre-Raphaelite and all those artists from, you know, from when art began, essentially. But I think I'm finding a lot less people are. Do you think the world is still going to appreciate art as technology arises and as people just get so busy with stuff do you think there will still be that same and i binge watching art? series is yeah exactly every weekend. yeah um, on their phones the whole time i mean <laughs> no i do, do i actually change, think maybe? i think i think that uh, technology will f it will feed a desire yeah. for i mean yes sometimes there is this there is just a deluge of stuff and yeah. you have to sort the wheat from the chaff yeah. but um i think that as the world becomes more visual mm. and more connected there's an entire group of people that haven't actually been able to access that information exactly. uh, up until this point. And I think that that will only lead to greater knowledge, greater inquisitiveness, greater mm. curiosity and engagement. I hope so. Yeah. Well, I absolutely love chatting to you and I cannot wait to come and see your gallery. Thank you so much for Thanks coming you. on the show. Thanks very much. Now, it was Pablo Picasso that said, art washes away from the soul, the dust of everyday life. It's thanks to the dedication of Ashley and all those who support the arts in our country that encourage us to appreciate the wealth of talent on African soil. Five Roses salutes all the artists of South Africa who inspire us through their creativity. We're giving away a fabulous Five Roses gift pack containing an assortment of all of their delicious teas and to stand a chance to win simply sms the keyword five roses your name and city to double three seven two eight sms's are charged at one round fifty each and t's and c's do apply so visit our website afternoonexpress.co.za for details join us again this time next week when we will be chatting to yet another exceptional south african woman and until then remember that nobody makes better tea than you and five roses Express.
Excuses.